tank for three bucks in, uh, in Calgary on the outskirts. And the guy told us everything was booked all the way to the dam. So I thought there was a storm coming, but it turned out to be the Rocky Mountains. <laughs> and uh, so we, we had 10 bucks. It's uh, Saturday night, and it's 66, like there's no, no bank machine, nothing. I like, had to wait till Monday to go to the bank. They would phone my bank, you know, all that stuff. Remember the old days? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we're yeah. pulling the van, and they said, "What do you want to do, Beverly? Do you want to go on to Vancouver, where we had we had a gig lined up, or do you want to uh, do you want to eat, or do you want to sleep?" She said, "Well, let's eat." <laughs> <laughs> so she chooses a wagon wheel steakhouse. She goes upstairs, and all these people in tuxedos eating steak. Like this is the West thing. <laughs> we told the girl, like the that we only had 10 bucks and we just wanted to split a hamburger and stuff. And she said, sure. So the next thing you know, Beverly and I, what we're getting a, a thing of shrimps. I said, no, 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 no. She said, well, some customer ordered them, but they didn't want them. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> the next thing that this board comes in with two steaks, you know, porterhouse steaks. I said, no. I said, I'm not washing dishes. I told you. I'm only <laughs> she said, oh, it's okay, no. uh, Extra. Apple pie, ice cream, coffee, the whole thing. I said, can I have the bill, please? You know, and she says, uh, no, it's on the house. <laughs> and I said, oh, well, thanks. She said, but Mr. Crispo, who owns the place, would like you to do a couple songs if you don't mind. So we did a couple of songs. And he came up afterwards, and he said, we, I'd like to hire you for the next four months. And uh, I said, sure, OK, 150 bucks a week from each. You imagine, like, I get a tank of gas, it's three bucks. Uh, he put us up in, uh, on the Bow River, uh, in that apartment, apartment building overlooking the Bow, and we could eat either at uh, the Wagon Wheel or Andrean's restaurant, three times a day, whatever we wanted. Right? And we played in Andrean's, it was always packed. Uh, we saw all sorts of, you know, the wonderful people coming through, movies, all sorts of stuff. <laughs> But we met this little guy <laughs> downstairs at Andrew Angeles with a soda jerk bar, you know, with stools around, maybe 50 of them. There was this little guy, and he could hardly speak English. <laughs> no, <laughs> he couldn't speak English, right? But he, he would, he, he looked after us exclusively for the whole summer. He had black curly hair, and he was as cute as a bug's ear. <laughs> and towards, after Labor Day, he said, Charlie, he said, he's you gotta get out of here. He said that they want you to play cards and you're gonna lose all your money. And we noticed like this big Lincoln with horns and these guys walking around <laughs> from Texas with six guns and stuff. So we sneaked out of town Saturday night at 1 a.m. and they chased us actually because they couldn't catch us and they asked them. But years later, I often wonder what happened to this little soldier. He <laughs> mean little guy. He showed up at the University of Waterloo and he was studying film. And it was Tessa Lycos. <laughs> he was now in charge of all the money in Toronto for films and stuff, right? <laughs> so it's a small world how it goes around, right? Yeah. Good times. <laughs> Waterloo was another trip. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, they made, he made a movie called The Waterloo Trip, which yeah. mostly had people oh. eating. <laughs> Thursday is a 
Send it back home. Send it back. 